Hallo Ron, wir sind heute hier im Militärischen Museum of the Bundeswehr in Dresden mit dem Kurator Jens Wehner. Hallo. Und wir schauen hier look here at one part of the Stalingrad Exhibition and especially at the Assault Engineers. Most of you might know the German Stalingrad movie of the 1990s and there the Assault Engineers are brought in with trained as specialists. The question yet is, what exactly were assault pioneers, Sturmpioniere? Yeah, in the Wehrmacht, there were no special branch called Sturmpioniere. Because before the war, there was a discussion about the so-called Einheitspionier or Universalpionier, meaning that a pioneer, so an engineer in English, should do everything that was possible for engineers branch, like uh, laying mines, sweeping mines, uh, building fortifications, and also to storm fortifications. And the attack on fortification was called Sturm Pioneer, so assault pioneer in English, I think. And um, When the Wehrmacht started to attack France in 1940, they had pioneer battalions, so engineer battalions, with a special training to storm those fortifications, and they were called Sturmpioniere. Okay. And the roots of this laid, of course, in World War I, when storm troops, like storm engineers, assault engineers, played a major role in the later uh, phases of trench warfare. So the German army, of course, had a knowledge about this already before World War II, a big experience, actually, but uh, it was not really that special branch in the Wehrmacht at the beginning of the war. So it was more like that um, regular engineers were trained, mm -hmm. especially in a way of fighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and only a minor part of the regular uh, engineers had those, this training, yeah. Okay, I, I think the first time I, I saw it so far mentioned was, and I think in an article from 1935, mm -hmm. when they actually talked about the first war, where they say, I think the Sturm Pioniere attacked at this position or mm -hmm. something. And I also found some regulations where Sturm Pioniere are mentioned, or how is it called? Now, how does it relate to, in the, in the movie Stalingrad, were this, these guys just regular? engineers then and they had the training or were, or were at certain points were like because I, I noticed that a renaming happened also in the Wehrmacht like at one point Grenadier was a, a special soldier like Panzer Grenadier mm -hmm. and then at one point every infantryman mm -hmm. got, got called a Grenadier. Was there also some inflationary thing happening with the salt engineers? Yeah, in a, in a way, yes. Uh, but uh, in Stalingrad, we have to say uh, it's usual pioneers, engineers, pioneers, as you want to call it. And they were just uh, pouring in to the battle. And of course, they had a training in close combat, as, uh, as every um, infantryman in the German army. And some pioneers, of course, had a special close combat training for engineers with fl flamethrower and so on. So the flamethrower, for instance, was regularly in every pioneer battalion, battalion of the Wehrmacht. So, of course, they had the knowledge how to attack a fortification and how to break a fortification, but there were no specialists assaults like the Sturm Pioneer term would suggest. Yeah. And especially about, about Stalingrad, there was, I think, the Operation Hubertus, mm -hmm. where they brought in especially engineers. Yeah, the, the Operation Hubertus, or Unternehmen Hubertus, as it was called in the German terminology uh, thing, uh, was invented, as far as I have read, by uh, General von Richthofen, so the head of the air fleet of, of Stalingrad, and he suggested to pull together all the available pioneer battalions to attack the city. And uh, he gave his idea to Yeshonek, the air staff chief of then at those times. And he suggested it to the headquarter and Hitler and so on. And they thought this would be a good idea. The reason behind this was that there was no infantry left already because the infantry already had such high losses that they couldn't replace it. And um, I think 
as far as I have read, this was much more common than only in Stalingrad. It was not a special case for the Eastern Front. If you look at the whole Eastern Front, so the pioneers always had to fight in close combat because there was not enough uh, infantry left. And so they pulled together five battalions, but there were other battalions additionally around. So five battalions were special um, on a special purpose for this mission, for this Unternehmen Hubertus, but at least three other pioneer battalions were around and attacked with those five uh, uh, battalions. And roughly altogether 3,000 men or so, one could say. And, and they were brought in from far away because like in the movie mm. Stalingrad, mm. you see like they, they previously fought in North Africa mm. with the Africa Corps and mm. then they are brought up from Italy mm. through, through Russia. Is this any, resembles this anything that is historically accurate or is this? No. Mostly. <laughs> okay. uh, mostly, mostly uh, I think seven out of eight were from the sixth army itself. Okay. They were just from the infantry divisions and they were still left. Let's say it like this, but the pioneer battle battalions that were left. And uh, I think one was from Germany, but I'm not sure. Maybe they were also around uh, the Sixth Army as a Harris trooper also. And um, uh, uh, so, so they were just usual pioneer battalions out of the Sixth Army, one could say. Oh, so it's mo mostly a result of attrition. To put this in context, uh, at one point in my Stalingrad video the, on the breakout, I, I quoted that I think from one Panzer division, the, the crew men who didn't had any tanks anymore, the one general assigned them to security duties for infantry duties so that the regular infantry that would provide the security usually could attack further. So mm -hmm. this, this is completely in line with that. So we basically bring everything in that is left mm -hmm. to, to make a next push because the Germans, mm -hmm. as far as I know, were always thinking that the Red Army was on the last stretch mm -hmm. and just one more push to the Volga and then... Yeah, and just short before Unternehmen Hubertus, there is a famous speech from Hitler on 8th, 8th November 42 uh, about that he will attack Stalingrad only with little stormtroops. Because he's, kleine Stoßtruppen. Yeah, kleine Stoßtruppen. And I think this is a reference to Unternehmen Hubertus, which, which was already in planning at this time. So you see, uh, in some way, it was a kind of um, bringing alive the old World War I trench thinking with stormtroops and so on. Didn't he refer ex explicitly to not to have a second Verdun? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. Verdun was this mass yeah. battle in the first world war, and so he, he was mm -hmm. like a firm be doing it differently now. Yeah. Okay. But I think the commanders at the place, so in Stalingrad, like Paulus and others, they already knew this would, wouldn't bring any success. This, I think for them it was clear. And, and as far as I have read, they had no euphoric thoughts about this operation and they didn't thought that this would be a success. So they already, I mean, they were basically already at Verdun, they knew in that, in that sense, you could say that's... Yeah, I don't know if much. they really had in mind Verdun, but I think they had in mind, oh, this would, would not give us the success we need. Yeah. So more troops were, were needed, definitely more. Yeah, they, they just had um, a lack of resources in all aspects, like ammo, ammo like... Uh, General log logistics, huge problem already at this time, even before the cauldron was built by the UN, yeah. Yeah, by the Red Army. And of course, manpower was just a huge lack of manpower because of the losses, which couldn't be replaced. Even I think as many of you and, and, and yourself know, even before the great summer operation of the Wehrmacht in 42. I mean, there was basically, as I already mentioned in a breakout video, the logistical situation of the Sixth Army was even before the encirclement happened. The cauldron was was pretty desperate. They already flew in, I think, some um, supply by air at that point. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, it, this is often forgotten because everyone thinks, okay, the encirclement happened and then the logistical situation is bad. No, it was bad already before. And about the general situation on the Eastern Front, I have like... Uh, another video where it's covered how, how little troops the Germans had in comparison to mm -hmm. 1941, where they basically were fully stacked. And then in 1942, they only focused on, on the, on Heeresgruppe Süd, Army Group South, mm -hmm. where 
where the Battle of Stalingrad happened, of course. Yeah. Is there anything more we have to add here about the Sturm Pioniere? Yeah, at least I would say that the operation failed, of course, as anticipated like by a lot of commanders at the front. And there's a very impressive uh, telling about this by Captain or Major Welts, who was the commander of one of the pioneer battalions. And he was really depressed about this. And after the war, he wrote about this in his memoirs. And he became the mayor of Dresden, so the town we lived there. So he became a communist leader, let's say, it like this. And this is also not so uncommon for people or soldiers who survived Stalingrad, uh, including generals. But we have a special, let's say, participant of this Unternehmen, Hubertus, who was also a pioneer and engineer, survived the battle and made a really impressive telling about the high losses they had in the attack of Unternehmen, um, Hubertus. Was it also a bit uh, politically motivated at that point? Yeah, of course, well, the memoirs were politically uh, motivated, but uh, as I said, it's not so uncommon for Stalingrad survivors. So the defeat at Stalingrad really had a high impact on the mentality of the soldiers, including the generals, and uh, the pioneers were no exception, obviously. So basically, sometimes we talk about the, the trauma of Stalingrad. Mm -hmm. so you, one could say there's like, you have PTSD, which is for the individual and, and like Stalingrad mm. to a certain degree is like PTSD on a collective level to a certain degree. Yeah, at least um, as Neitzel, Professor Neitzel turned out, there is a cohesion vertically. And I think Stalingrad massively destroyed this vertical cohesion. Yeah, They had no longer a trust to their leadership oh. because of the high losses, because of the great defeat. And Hubertus, seems to be a little bit even like this, uh, seems to be a, a little bit like this, um, even before the court run and the big defeat was coming. Okay. So yeah, I mean, the, the loss of a complete army with, with every officer, NCO, and of course every enlisted man is a, a different thing. Because I think at one point I read that the Soviets previously said like the Germans always push their troops out or get their troops out when we encircle them, but this doesn't happen on our side. Mm -hmm. And then in, in that sense, in Stalingrad, there was this ma major shift. And I think they were as well surprised the Soviets how many troops they encircled at Stalingrad. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they thought only 80,000 or so. Okay, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you for the Military History Museum for inviting me. Also, thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and subscribe so for making trips like this possible. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.